Uh, my name is Nyashan Kwatai. I'm from South Sudan and I'm currently the Acting Executive Director for Assistance Mission for Africa. And I'm here at USIP for uh, the South Sudan Working Group. South Sudanese women have come a long way with their contributions. They are amazing women, looking at the fact that they have lived in conflict for so long before the CPA, even after the CPA and the 2013 uh, war, and it's still like 75% of the people affected by conflict in South Sudan are women and children. They're facing so many different difficulties, but they still rise above that. And I think one major key contribution South Sudanese women have achieved so far, and just to connect it to some recent um, achievements, is that they're able to speak up, you know, despite the harmful cultural practices, being silenced, you know, despite the shrinking of civic space and the lack of having a safe space, but they still talk and they speak up about, you know, inequalities, about gender-based violence and about other issues that are affecting women and girls. For the current situation, there are predictions that there might be a post conflict, uh, post-violence election, and definitely women and girls are the ones going to get affected. So the role South Sudanese women can play is influence the spaces where they are under different umbrellas, being the women coalition, being the women bloc, being women in politics, and make sure that they play a role where they are part of the process as an equal partner to prevent, you know, any post-violence that is going to happen, and also to make sure that the 35% quota is implemented during the election process, whereby they can be part of the electoral process, and also they can be part of, you know, elected women within the system as partners. In South Sudan, looking at the harmful cultural practices, the way the society is built is built in a way that sexual gender-based violence is not recognized as a crime within the grassroots community. For example, if a girl went through rape, they end up marrying her off to her perpetrator because it brings a lot of shame, you know, instead of holding the perpetrator accountable. So recently, last year and the year before, there have been cases of intimate, you know, partner violence that leads to killing. And we lost like almost three South Sudanese women who were killed by their own partners. What is being done so far, there is a lot of awareness raising on that and looking at the fact that this International Women's Day theme for the year 2023 is looking at how people can use technology and innovation to reduce gender-based violence. I believe that South Sudanese women used internet, used you know, digital spaces to raise awareness and to speak up. And as a result, some of these partners are being held accountable by the law. And so far, partners are working towards that. Partners such as UNFPA, other UN agencies, and local civil society. They're working together to mitigate sexual gender-based violence and GBV. And currently we have the GBV uh, law, the GBV bill, and also we have the family law at the stage of being discussed at the parliament for it to be passed. So for me, I think that is an achievement and it is something to celebrate.